Let's uh, let's take a look at another influential thinker. Um, it's on my influential thinkers list here, um, and this is this uh, this man is probably one of the more important um, mentor um, thinkers in my life. Uh, free thinkers, um, an extraordinary man who I I just uh, I feel like just, I just just uh, touching the surface with. Uh, uh, the power of his thoughts and the implications of his thoughts for um, developing a better humanity, a more kind and gentle humanity in the world. Uh, Carl R. Rogers um, lived from 1902 to 1987, and um, for a while there, I, I took graduate classes in psycho in uh, counseling psychology at UW Stout in the 80s and so Rogers was huge then he was still alive and um, uh, it, I would say if I had a counseling style it would be uh, Rogers and you know letting people um, develop their own uh, thoughts and, and basically just be a guidepost with clients and not trying to do overly direct the session um, and uh, his concept of empathy, of course, um, is is um, is revolutionary. Um, that um, that we need to have more empathy for each other and respect each other's life paths. And so those are not his his words, but my words. But um, you know this this new empathy group that I'm a part of. It's a sort of a Empathy study group. Uh, it, it's uh, actually uh, takes place in California, but it's online. And the uh, uh, the host Edwin Rush is a, a very gentle and kind man, and he's it, empathy is one of his 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 things. And I, I think uh, I think that he's onto something, which is very interesting. So I've I've just been thrilled to be part of the group uh, um, for the last couple of weeks, and I'm going to try to keep with him, but. It's a group that uh, practices reflective listening, um, which is, it's, I guess you call it, I don't know, it's group therapy, but it's more of like a, uh, based in California, right, it's a growth group. It doesn't, doesn't mean it's uh, healing anything, but it's making something better, self-actualizing human relations and things like that. So um, empathy is the ability to put yourself in somebody else's shoes and to really feel and reflect um, so that the other person feels free, freely reflected, and then that person then shares, and then another person um, um, reflects, and it's a constant conversation like that, which makes it interesting. So yeah, the empathy group is 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 very cool. Um, so this is um, just a little bit of my conception of Carl Rogers. Uh, my father actually met him when he was working in Madison as a uh, practice doctor or I guess not a practice doctor an internist or resident um, the person-centered approach was Rogers own unique approach to understanding personality and human relationships Carl Rogers found wide application in various domains such as psych psychotherapy and counseling client-centered therapy he called it education student-centered learning organizations and other group settings for his professional work, he was bestowed the Award for Distinguished Professional Contributions to Psychology in 1972 by the APA, American Psychological Association. Toward the end of his life, Carl Rogers was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for his work with national intergroup conflict in South Africa and Northern Ireland. That's kind of cool, huh? I didn't know he was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. First time I've heard that. In a study by Hagelbloom, using six criteria such as citations and recognition, Rogers was found to be the sixth most eminent psychologist of the 20th century and second among clinicians, only to Sigmund Freud. So, not bad. Not a bad life, I'd say. Um, so it goes into his history. Um, he taught at University of Wisconsin until 1963. That's where my dad met him. Um, I just purchased a 
one of his books called On Personal Power, which I still have to. And A Way of Being, I want to reread that. I read that like 30 years ago. Um, so Roger's theory of the self is considered to be humanistic and phenomenological. Um, his theory is based directly on the phenomenal field personality theory of Combs and Snide. Um, and Roger's elaboration of his own theory is extensive. He wrote 16 books, many more journal articles. However, Petroshka and Norcross state Rogers consistently stood for an empirical evaluation of psychotherapy. He and his followers have demonstrated a humanistic approach to conducting therapy and a scientific approach to evaluating therapy. Um, so his theory uh, was based on 19 propositions. This was as in the 50s. It kind of was all set by the 1950s on what his theories what some of the bullet points of his theories were. All individuals exist in a continually changing world of experience of which they are the center. The organism reacts to the field as it's experienced and perceived. Um, and the perceptual field is reality for the individual. So perception is reality. Whatever the client's perception is, that's the most important thing to follow. I guess that's what he's saying. The organism, the organism, funny how he calls people the organism, the organism reacts as an organized whole to this phenomenal field. A portion of the total perceptual field gradually becomes differentiated as the self. As a result of interaction with the environment, and particularly as a result of evaluational interaction with others, the structure of the self is formed, an organized, fluid, but consistent conceptual pattern of perceptions of characteristics and relationships, I or the me together, with the values attached to these concepts. The organism has one basic tendency in striving to actualize, to maintain and enhance the experiencing organism. So to strive and to actualize one's experience, that's a key component for the Rogerian therapies, I guess. The best vantage point to understanding behavior is from the internal frame reference of the individual. Behavior is basically the goal-directed attempt of the organism to satisfy its needs as experience in the field is perceived. Emotion accompanies and in general facilitates such goal-directed behavior, a kind of emotion being related to the perceived significance of the behavior, the maintenance and enhancement of the organism. Values attached to the experiences and the values are part of the self-structure. In some instances are values experienced directly by the organism and in some instances are values interjected or taken over from others but perceived in distorted fashion as if uh, they had been experienced directly. As experience occur in the life of the individual, they are either symbolized or denied symbolization. Most of the ways of behaving that are adopted by the person are those that are consistent with the concept of self. So you're not, not, you're not going to be behaving outside this strict frame of what you think of as yourself. In um, some instances, behavior may be brought about by organic experiences and needs that have been symbolized. Such behavior may be inconsistent with the structure of the self, but in such instances, behavior is not owned by the individual. Psychological adjustment exists when the concept of the self is such that all the existentiary and visceral experiences of the organism are or may be assimilated on a symbolic level into a consistent relationship with the concept of self. Psychological maladjustment exists when the person denies awareness of significant sensory and visceral experiences, which consequently are not symbolized and organized into the gestalt of the self-structure. When this situation occurs, there's a basic or potential psychological tension. So somebody's denying major contradictions in the way a person should behave, for example, then um, then there's this there's this instability, this problem of equilibrium. Um, any experience which is inconsistent with the organization of the structure of the self may be perceived as a threat. And more of these perceptions are there the more rigidly the self structure is organized to maintain itself. Um, you think about religion, how that is true with religion, that you okay, you gotta do this, you gotta march this way, you gotta say these prayers, you gotta do this this day, you've got to say these things. Uh, that, I think, is what he's talking about, is that if a person 
does not isn't consistent with what they perceive as the right thing, then they go off the tracks, so to speak. When the individual perceives and accepts into one consistent integrated system all of his sensory and visceral experiences, then he or she is necessarily more understanding of others, is more accepting of others as separate individuals. Um, so in other words, when once people get a more, when they get their, you know, the layman's language would be if you get your shit together, then it's easier to see the world in perspective. Um, and um, so that when you've got your life together, it's easier to see the, the world looks more orderly. <laughs> even though it's not, but it looks more orderly and more um, consistent, I guess. Um, and more, you're more accepting of people as individuals if you understand yourself, I guess. As the individual perceives and accepts into his self-structure more of his organic experiences, he finds that he is replacing his present value system based extensively on introjections, which have been distortedly symbolized with a continuing uh, organismic valuing process. So that says a lot there. But um, if, if a person sees that their symbolization in their life has been distorted, um, and then he's, if he's growing, he or she is replacing this present value system with a more um, flexible perspective on the same things. Additionally, Rogers is known for practicing unconditional positive regard, which is defined as accepting a person without negative judgment of the person's basic worth. Unconditional positive regard, that's a great concept. Um, it's also known for something called incongruence. Rogers identified the real self as the aspect of one's being that is founded in actualizing tendency, following uh, the valuing needs and receiving positive regard and self-regard, it is the you that if all goes well, you will become uh, the real self. So if all goes well, this is how I'm going to be. If my life is successful, this is how my personality is going to be. This is how I'm going to interact with people. This is um, if I am um, have that ideal job with the red sports car and... Uh, and um, you know, a million dollars a year, and this is how I'm going to interact, this is how I'm going to feel about myself, this is how. On the other hand, to the extent that our society is out of sync with the actualizing tendency, and we're forced to live with conditions of worth that are out of step with our valuing deep inside, and receive only conditional regard and self-regard, we develop instead as an ideal self. By ideal, Rogers is suggesting something not real, something that is always out of our reach the standard we cannot we cannot humanly meet that the gap between the real self and the ideal self the I am and I should is called incongruity so if the I am is too far from the I want to be or I should be then there's this break there's this um, incongruence of my ideal self here my real self here and the key is what kinds of actions and thoughts will put me into one integrated, more powerful and loving and compassionate self right here, right? So, um, yeah, that's kind of cool, huh? Very cool stuff. Incongruence. Um, so, in, in some of his writings, too, he... He talked about how this unconditional positive regard and reflective listening um, can be revolutionary for society. Revolutionary in the sense that if the nature of our interactions change, and this is something that we talked about in the empathy group um, the last couple of weeks, if, if the nature of the general nature of our interactions change, if, if there's a radical transformational process a substantive quintessential change in how we think and relate and act and how we are compassionate to each other and that can change everything so um, what that means is that um, this concept of empathy is is just a radically good it's um, something that we need more of to really really feel for another person and on all levels and 
to to know that life is so short that we must act with love um, you know and not to get over overly religious here but Jesus did say love one another <laughs>